There are a few small changes from the 2022 to the 2023 model. We've got some differences going on with the seats, we've got some exterior color changes, and a few small tweaks other than that. But it has remained relatively unchanged from the 2022 model year. Underneath the hood, we still have the option for either the regular 3.0-liter turbocharged or the Grand Touring Hybrid version of the vehicle. Still have it available all-wheel drive with a crazy amount of technology available. And before we get started unpacking the 2023 Aviator, I do want to give Yorkdale Lincoln a huge shout out and a thank you for giving me access to this vehicle to shoot the video for you today. Check down in the description below for their contact details. And if you're looking at either ordering a Lincoln, Ford, so whether that's the Aviator or the Explorer ST, the Ford equivalent, you can reach out to these guys. They'll be able to help you out. Let's dive into it and unpack it because the Aviator, this specific one, looks really, really sharp. And there are a few reasons why. It has the new jet package that's available in the vehicle. We've got these beautiful 22 inch wheels and they look fantastic. Now, the Aviator in general, you're gonna have either 19s, 20s, 21s, or 22s, depending on which packages you've gone for, what trim level, etc. So we do have a few options. Now, when it comes down to the trim level itself, we do in Canada only have two options available. Down in the States, you've got four different trim level choices. This one is the Reserve 201A, which is the highest package available in Canada, looking at the regular gas model. But it's great. We've got our all-wheel drive. We do have the option for the adaptive air suspension, but exterior styling, what makes the jet package a little bit more unique is what's going on with some of the rockers and things like that. A little bit more pronounced when we get into that white exterior, but the black looks really sharp. It's that black on black look. It just looks mean. Look at this. We've got that same jet package on a white exterior instead. The black on white look, it just makes it pop that little bit more. We've got all of the black highlights following throughout the body of the vehicle. The 22 inch tires that are standard in the jet pack just pop that bit more. Like, don't get me wrong, the black on black look is sharp, but I mean, look at all of these small highlights, black caps, black caps, black grill. I don't know, this is a tough call. This black on white look is really nice. It looks sharp. And then moving in towards the front end, we've got our LED headlamps. And then we've got our fog lamps down below. Now, the fog lamps are actually not standard on the Aviator anymore. So we are looking at having to get the illumination package in the majority of trim levels in order to get those fogs. So if that's something that you want, just make sure you let your Lincoln representative know that's a feature that you want to see. But I mean, I love, I gotta say, the grill inside of this thing with the jet pack. It looks fantastic. We've got this beautiful honeychrome black grill. It looks really, really nice. We've got our Lincoln Star right in the middle. So we've got our forward facing camera. We've got our side view mounted cameras as well as our backup camera. So this thing has a full 360 camera, which looks fantastic. We've got a full 360 view, a front partial view, front 180 degree view. And one of the amazing things is because of all of the different sensors and cameras this has, we also do have a full park assist system. It's phenomenal. But if you want to know how to use park assist, really straightforward, but check down in the description below for that walkthrough and park assist instead. It's a really, really straightforward system to use. We've got a release. We just need to pull that twice. And once we do, that fully releases it. So we don't need to worry about any sort of thing to kind of push off to the side. We just ugh, lift up, but we've got this. Now, I did mention the Aviator does technically have two different options that are available when we look underneath the hood. So, I mean, technically it's the same three liter turbocharged engine, but inside of the Grand Touring, that's when we get into the plug-in hybrid version of the vehicle. But power-wise, this three liter is 400 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque. Compared to the hybrid, it's 494 horsepower and 630 pound-feet of torque. It is ridiculous when you get into that Grand Touring. So we do have some electric kilometers and miles that we could look at, but it's really more about some added power that we get from the nano electric motor inside of the Grand Touring. But don't get me wrong, the power inside of just the regular aviator, the three liter is fantastic. But if you're mechanically inclined, you wanna do some things yourself, you could easily top up your fluid as necessary. So windshield wiper fluid, checking, changing oil, a little bit more difficult in the back there. It's kind of covered off with this brace in the middle there, but one thing you wanna make sure you're doing is at least maintaining your vehicle. 
Now, as a Lincoln owner, so Black Label specifically, you will have a prepaid maintenance plan included with your vehicle, but you can get those prepaid maintenance plans at time of purchase. And one of the big benefits there is that it's essentially just like a set it and forget it maintenance protection plan. So as maintenance is needed on your vehicle, you just bring it in or get a concierge to pick it up. They do the maintenance as necessary and you're good to go. So you want to make sure you're maintaining to make sure that you're also keeping the manufacturer's warranty active, because if you're not maintaining your vehicle, any sort of issue comes up and they could say you didn't keep up your end of the buyer's agreement and maintain it. So just make sure you're maintaining regularly changing your oil, all that fun stuff. Looking at fuel quality inside of the Aviator, same as last year. So we do have a non-locked cover when we look at the regular gas version. When you're in the hybrid, it's going to be a locked cover instead. And that's just got to do with depressurization and all that fun stuff. Minimum manufacturer's recommendation is just your regular 87 gas. So as long as you're using at least that 87, you're gonna get good performance. But little bit of a caveat, the horsepower and torque specs that we were looking at underneath the hood are achieved using a premium fuel. Now the back end of the aviator, we do have a little kind of like spoiler over top, which is kind of neat because our rear wiper is actually hidden there, which is kind of nice. We do have our Lincoln badge right along the back of the vehicle, beautiful LED tail lamps. We've got a reverse sensing system. We've got our backup camera. And then we also do have a quad tip exhaust. Now, one thing you might just be able to see is we've got this, and this is a little cover for our trailer tow package. So it's going to cover up our receiver, our four, seven pin provisions, etc. Now, if you are looking at towing inside of the aviator up to 5,600 pounds, so it is a pretty decent towing amount that we've got there. If you need a little bit more, navigator is where you're going to want to be. We've got a few different ways that we can get into the cargo area of the vehicle. We've got our foot activated lift gate. We can do it on the key fob. We can do it just to the left hand side of the steering wheel. But if you wanted to, you could also manually do it yourself. We do have a little button. So just underneath that second L in Lincoln, we've got a button there. We're just going to push. Up it goes. But let's have a peek at the cargo dimensions. All right, now the Aviator does have a pretty good amount of space to it for just the cargo area by itself. Just in the back here, we've got a series of buttons. So we can fold down the left seat, the right seat, or both seats together if we want to. So we just do a press. Down it goes. And as you can see there, so it is going to be a power down and power back up for the third row. Second row is just going to be a manual fold up and down. We could fold that seat down fairly easily all at the same time. So just from the inside here, if we wanted to, we could just crank this tab over top and down that seat goes. And then just along the side of the second row, we've got a release there. But I mean, it opens it up even more when we've got that second and third row folded down. So it's going to be a matter of how much space do you actually need inside of this thing? Like I said, because we can easily fold down the second and third row, the bench seat, not necessarily a bad thing unless we're trying to get some larger people into the third row on top of that. So off to the left hand side here, we've got these three buttons that I'd mentioned we can use in order to fold the third row seats up or down. We can fold down each seat independently if we want to. We've got a few cargo hooks back there as well. And then you do have the option for a privacy shade. So a small shade, which we could get aftermarket from our dealer. So very simple to install there, but it is a fairly small one all at the same time. Now, other things to point out, we've got a 12 volt power point back here, another little cargo hook on top of that. And then we could access it from the third row, but we've got a little storage space right along the top there. Off to the left, we do have a speaker back there, and that's because this is the upgraded sound system because we're in the 201A reserve model of the vehicle. But other things to point out, we do have this removable tray. When we remove it, it gives us a boatload of space underneath. We've got a tiny little bit of storage space as well. We can kind of throw some things under there if we want to. And then if we ever need to get to our spare tire, we're just going to lift this up. And we've got our spare tire underneath with our jack and things like that. Now, one interesting thing, being a Lincoln owner, is that you also do have access to Lincoln roadside assistance. So it's going to be based off of our powertrain warranty, but we do have a good amount of coverage there. So if you ever break down, if for whatever reason you need to have your tire changed, need gas, whatever the case may be, you can call on Lincoln Roadside Assistance. They'll either send somebody to come help you out or tow you to a Lincoln dealer instead, which is fantastic. Think of it almost like CA or AAA down in the States, but rather than being tied to the person, it's tied to that specific vehicle instead. 
Now, one other thing that's slightly different from 22 to 23 is we've got the option for a foot activated lift gate delete. So this thing, normally you'd just be able to swipe your foot underneath and the lift gate would lift up automatically. It's part of the hands-free package, but we do have the option of getting the hands-free delete. It's going to save us a couple bucks from the factory. So if that's not a feature you care about, you can technically order that if you want to. And we still have the option of opening up this way, key fob, and then just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel as well. Looking along the side view mirror, we do have this little guy. So that's going to highlight orange when somebody's entered the blind spot in either side of the vehicle. We do have our side view mounted camera there as well for part of that 360 system. Now looking along the side here, we also do have a series of other buttons that we can kind of see there. So we've got a five digit number that we can enter in if we need to get inside the vehicle. And open she goes. But let's have a look at some of these features. Got this nice leather there. Really, really sharp. Follows all the way through at the inside, all the way across, which is really nice. But series of buttons on the outside here to point out. So we do have a series of different seat memory buttons. So three individual profiles. This button here is going to be for the massage chair seat. So it's a hot button press in order to turn our massage seats. We do have multi-way adjustable seats. So the buttons that you'll see here are gonna depend on whether or not you have the active motion system in your aviator. But one interesting thing is we did have a changeover. So it went from a default 12 way adjustable driver down to a 10 way for the 23 instead. But with the multi-way adjust, the seat adjusts all over the place. We've got more advanced controls when we press that button, forwards, backwards, up and down. We can even adjust, look at this, each individual leg cushion if we wanted to. Such a cool feature. But back on the outside here. So series of other options. So we've got this nice metallic look. Speaker right in the middle. Speaker down below because this is the Reserve 201A. We've got all over the place. Speakers everywhere. We've got our base controls so we can unlock and lock. Adjust our side view mirrors. Power fold our side view mirrors. We have our window up and down. Little handle there. We've got the actual button in order to be able to get out of the vehicle. So rather than a physical door handle, we've got this instead. If for whatever reason this dies, the vehicle's died, you need to get out. We've got this little emergency release. So what we're going to do is just pull there and that kind of acts as our traditional handle instead. Steering wheel is going to be power telescoping across the entire vehicle lineup. So just in, out, up and down as necessary. Hmm. Ah. The first row of the aviator, it is, it's really nice, especially looking at the color interior here. It just, it pops, it's so much different. Like you could just go for your traditional ebony. And like, don't get me wrong, that ebony, so that black interior with the black exterior looks really, really sharp. It's almost as good as like the white exterior, white interior, that combination also looks good. But I like this one, it's that little bit different. The styling is good. I mentioned all of the nice highlights around the door. We've got that beautiful leather that follows all the way throughout the dash. That like metal applique, like all the way through the middle there as well, looks really sharp. And that kind of same feel follows through the center stack. There are some small differences from the 2022 to the 2023, looking at the interior side of things. We have the option for a head up display delete. So if you're not a fan of the head up display, we can actually delete that. Some other small things to look at, the seats themselves. We went from a 12 way adjustable as the default in 22 to a 10 way adjustable inside of the 23 on the driver's side. And then it's an eight way adjustable on the passenger side as the default. But having said that, I always recommend in the aviator, just go for the option for the massage chair seats, the active motion seats. These things are fantastic. So we can get a massage as we go. If you have a tendency to spend a lot of time in your vehicle, distance trips, if you're caught in traffic, etc., having the massage seats, phenomenal. And one of the benefits when we get that adjustable seat is that we have the flexibility of adjusting our driver passenger seat so many other ways. We can literally have this thing hug our body as much as we'd like it to. It's really, really nice. But this is like, it is, it's beautiful overall. I love the digital cluster screen inside of this thing. If you want more of an in-depth look on how to use the steering wheel, the cluster screen, the media screen, etc., If you want to know how to use the adaptive cruise control system, check down in the description below. I've put together a crazy number of comprehensive videos that explain how to use all this technology stuff. But let's go through some of the basics. So start up. We are push button start inside of this. And when we start up, 
we've got this beautiful welcome screen in the cluster as well as in the media screen. It's really, really nice. We've got a little button along the top that lets us change songs, radio stations, we can navigate using our voice. We do have paddle shifters inside of this thing. But the steering wheel is fantastic, nice leather wrapped, heated all the way around, which is good. We've got some kind of like hideaway buttons too, which are really neat. So it's specifically for our cruise control system, but we push the little button for cruise to turn it on and it illuminates the other buttons that we can use, which are all done through the back. But I did mention if you want to know how to use the adaptive cruise, check in the description for the walkthrough on how to use that system. It's really, really simple. Now, one cool thing is that we can have the steering wheel. We adjust it however we want to. We adjust our seat however we want to. We adjust our side view mirrors however we want to. And then we press and hold either one, two, or three in order to be able to save our own personal profiles, which is fantastic. So if you have multiple drivers, we can easily set those up if we want to. But one other button to point out, we've got our three main buttons. We've got another button. When we push that, it brings up the option for some more advanced controls to kind of hug the backrest a little bit more, or we can also turn on massage seats. So nice massage seats, I love it. So we've got a series of different options that are available for the driver passenger massage chair seats, which is fantastic. So I did mention if you're the type of person where you go on longer distance trips, having that massage chair seat, really, really useful feature to have. It's really nice. We've got our base event controls. We've got this little P button there. So the vehicle can either help us navigate to parking or can help us out with park assist, looking on the left or right hand side for parallel parking, perpendicular parking or parallel park out. So we've got a few different options available there. We also do have, so let's get rid of that, our 360 camera. So we push the little camera button. We've got our full 360 view. We've got our front partial view. We go full screen front partial or full screen 180, which is going to help us out getting out of tight spaces, etc. Back into our 360 view instead. And then we just hide that camera instead. We do have a little driver assistance button to get it go through a few basic settings or move through some additional settings. But this is the Sync 3 media screen. Same thing like what we saw last year. So if you want a full walk around and how this screen works, check down in the description below for that walkthrough instead. But as we start to move down a little bit, drop you down as you can see there we do also have our piano keys so park reverse neutral drive and it is really nice we've got this nice kind of metallic look throughout and then it's married with this kind of glossy black highlight instead from there we've got our volume rocker and the audio into this thing like the song is amazing i love the band and the bass which pumps through this audio system even more like it is phenomenal the way this thing sounds but we've got our volume rocker, we can turn the audio on off. Tuning rocker, we can seek this way, we can seek using the steering wheel. We've got our max windshield defroster, rear defroster, our AC. We do have dual, well, technically I guess it's tri-zone. And then even more than that, we've got quad zone because we can adjust the second and third row temperature on top of that. And that's all done right through the middle screen. So we push the rear button here, and then that brings up this little menu. So we can adjust what's going on with either the second or third row climate. We can link them up if we want to, turn it on off, we can lock them out. We can increase or decrease the fan speed for that third row or turn it off as well. We've got our heated ventilated first row seats so we can turn on if we want to all the way, turn off, turn on our cooled seats as well. So it is really nice we've got that available as an option. We've got an electronic parking brake and then a series of different drive modes. And when we adjust our drive modes, it looks really sharp in the center screen. So we can go through, we've got our conserve, excite mode, normal mode, we've got slippery, deep conditions on top of that. If you want to unlock the truest performance of the aviator, you definitely want to be in the excite mode. It's going to rev up the RPMs a little bit more and give you an infinitely more aggressive performance inside of this thing because it shoots up those RPMs, you just go that much faster. Is really nice. Now from here. We've got this armrest, very, very comfortable. Nice stitching kind of follows all the way throughout, which is kind of a nice contrast to what's going on with the seats. But popping this thing open, we've got a 12 volt power point. We've got a little tray that technically is, as you saw there, fully removable. And we've also got a little wireless charge pad there. Moving up overhead, we've got the auto dimming rear view mirror, which as of right now still can't be turned off, unfortunately, but it still is there. We've got our base controls as well for our cabin. We've got our, our top control as well for our sunroof. So single button press opens up the shade part way, so about halfway. 
Secondary button press opens it up the rest of the way, and that's the same way with the roof itself. So we push once. That opens things up pretty much the full way, but secondary button press opens it up that last tiny little bit. So that extra inch or so does matter. But single button press in order to close both the roof itself as well as the shade. Really straightforward. Now from there, we do have our sunglasses holder. We've got our home link system. So if you've got a garage door opener at home, you can easily program it in. We've got our visor, vanity mirror with a built-in light, a little business card holder, and this bad boy is stretching out to block all of the sun. The optional head-up display there, equally as impressive. We've got our time, our temperature, our speed, our speed sign recognition. We've got our gas mileage, so how much fuel we have left. We've also got our lane keeping system. If you had navigation going, that would also show up in the head-up display, which is so, so cool. There is one thing, and the Aviator, it looks like, is going to be the last vehicle to get it, and that's the Sync 4 media screen. So for the 23 model, the Aviator still is on the last generation Sync 3 screen. Not necessarily a bad thing, because the screen itself is nice, but the Sync 4 screen just kicks it up that one extra notch. The Corsair got it this year, the Nautilus and the Navigator already had it. So it is going to be nice once this thing gets an upgrade. It should come next year because the Corsair was just done. But like I said, the Sync 3 screen is nice. It is still fairly responsive. We've got factory navigation. We do have the flexibility of connecting through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay with a wired connection. So it still is there as an option. But I mean, if you need it, you need it. And we've got USB ports all over the place if we need to plug ourselves in in order to be able to use that system. So that's the one thing this is missing is going to be that Sync 4 screen. But like I said, next year should be coming. But the overall styling inside of this thing, it is really, really nice. And like the seats, I still, I can't get over how dang comfortable these seats are. When we look at the second row of the Aviator, the spacing inside of it is actually pretty nice. Now, one caveat to that is the middle seat. So when we get the bench seat inside of the Aviator, it does make things a little bit tight. So the seat itself is locked into place, so we can't slide it forwards or backwards at all. So the one downside to this bench seat is it's locked into place. But, I mean, do you go for the bench seat? Do you go for the dual captain's chairs with or without the console? It's going to be a matter of preference. The console is kind of neat because we've got a little armrest control there. We can control the shade on top of that from the second row. If you do have the bench seat, we can drop down, push open some cup holders, which is kind of cool. So very straightforward there. It is really, really nice. Now, the second row seats are very comfortable at the same time. So, I mean, we could pull in order to be able to kind of recline the seat. And then, so this is with the receipt fully reclined back as far as it's going to go. I've got three-ish, a little over three inches of headspace there. So plenty of space. Could you fit three full-size versions of me in the second row? I mean, technically, <laughs> with the big one being this middle seat instead. So it is very, very tight for me inside of the middle seat of the bench. We do have all of the same highlights that we saw along the driver's side door back here. So we've got the nice highlight along the side. We've got that beautiful interior kind of leather that flows throughout the door. Now on top of that, we have this little control pad in the back, which gives us the flexibility of being able to control the seats, the climate, we can control the audio as well, which is fantastic. And we've got general settings there too. But we do have the control for our heated second row seats on the outboard. So it doesn't matter if you have the bench seat or the dual captain's chairs, the outer outboard seats are the only seats that are gonna be heated inside of this vehicle. We've got all of our different bottle holders along the door. I did mention we've got some cup holders there. We've got some pockets behind the first row seats. And then just underneath the bottom part of the armrest, we do have two more power points. Well, I should say, I guess, technically three, because we've got a USB, USB-C, as well as a traditional wall outlet back here too. But the plugs that you get are gonna depend on how you have your vehicle configured. We do have a second row shade back here. So things are a little bit too bright. All we have to do, up and over in order to block things off and it blocks it off nicely. So it dark, darkens things up as you saw there. So, I mean, getting into the third row of the aviator, pretty straightforward. Now I did mention we do have the option for either the bench seat, like what we're looking at here, 
or we've got the dual captain's chairs. So, I mean, obviously, if we had the dual captain's chairs, we could just kind of walk and waddle our way back through to that third row if we wanted to. But because we've got the bench instead, we actually have to move the seat. So, in order to do that, we've got a button right along the top of the seat. That's going to power fold it forward. And ooh, back we go. So, let's get that headrest ooh, back up again. So, spacing wise, in the third row, it's a little bit tight. So when I'm sitting off to the left-hand side a little bit, easy enough for me to sit in the seat to a degree. Like knee space is actually, it's, it's pretty tight back here. So, I mean, my right knee is kind of touching the middle seat here. And that's the downside of getting the bench because, oh, let's just get this out of the way for you. If you have people that are a little bit taller, I mean, yeah, we could just fold the bench down and it makes it a little bit easier. But if we get the dual captain's chairs instead, you just kind of throw your legs up and over if you needed to kind of stretch out a little bit. Unless you've got kids, because we've got all of our anchor points and tethers and things like that in the second and the third row. So if you need front facing, rear facing child seats, not going to have an issue whatsoever. But I mean, you could fit two full size versions of me back here with the bench. It's going to be a little tight because that bench seat is locked into place. We can't slide it forwards or backwards at all. So if you know you're going to have four or five adults in there, probably a good idea to go for the bench or the dual captain's chairs instead of the bench, just to give a little bit more leg room to people that are in this third row instead. But with the seat back at kind of its minimal distance, Along the left side, I've got more than enough space, but it still comes down to that middle seat. It would be very, very tight back here for me. Uh, overall, just impressions of the seat itself in the third row, not quite as comfortable as what we found inside of the second row. It still is nice that we've got a third row seat here though. But I mean, if I had to, if I had to go on longer distance trips, wouldn't necessarily mind it too much. We've got a nice leather here. But one thing that would be really, really cool in this third row is that if we had seats that could recline a tiny little bit. Yeah, so unfortunately, these things are locked into place. But I mean, at the same time, there is still technically room for two full size versions of me back here. Now, other things to point out. We do have a little storage tray along both the driver passenger side. We do have some cup holders back here. And then we've got a little overhead light on top of that. Now, getting out, really simple. There we go. 400 horsepower. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. Oh, the guy behind me literally just cut off a bus. Who does that? Now, I have put together a video comparing the Aviator to the Ford Explorer because they are technically built on the same platform. So if you want to see that video, check in the description below. I mean, a few big differences, like under the hood, you're going to find the same three liter turbocharged engine in some versions of the Explorer, but where you're really going to notice the difference, the interior, the cabin is way quieter inside of the, inside of the Aviator. On top of that, we have like the massage chair seats available as an option, which are a step above what you'll find in the Platinum Explorer. It's just like a night and day difference. The cabin's quieter. We've got the adaptive suspension. It's just, it's a luxury vehicle compared to the Explorer, which is, it's, don't get me wrong, it's a nice car, but it's not the Aviator. There's just something different about all of the small touches that Lincoln has in this vehicle. It's really nice. Well, folks, that was a look at the 2023 Lincoln Aviator. What did you think? A few small changes from 22 to 23, maybe some notable ones, and I can't wait until this thing gets that interior upgrade to sync for. But if you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. More than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. And I did mention that you can find all of those different walk around videos for the steering wheel cluster, the media screen, park assist, using the adaptive cruise control, etc., all in the description of the video. But if you found this one useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and until I see you next time, take care. So whether you're a Lincoln owner or but minimum manufacturer's recommendation is technically just your 87 octane, so regular fuel inside, I'm, I'm, I'm in Ontario. Yeah. Now, we could push that left so the minus button, yeah.